my name is Katie and welcome back to my channel. Today is a day because this is the last video that I'm going to be filming in front of the shelves. Next time you see me, I will be in a new apartment and I will have a new setup. I don't know what that setup is going to be. It might look similar, it might look different, but it's gonna be new. So I did just wanna film one last video here before I move and that is going to be the mid-year book freakout tag. I've done this tag every year that I've been on booktube and it's a little late this year, but better late than never. I just think it's a really great way to talk about all the books that you've read so far in the year. And yeah, um, I think at this point in the year, I've read about 27 books, which is a little bit below average <laughs> compared to the last two years. I've read 100 plus books, um, but this year I've kind of decided to slow down just because I've just been doing my own thing, you know, like I don't need to always read a super lot if I'm not in the mood for it and that's kind of the mentality that I've taken on this year so I'm not disappointed at the amount of books that I've read or anything like that and plus like COVID happened and so like life is just a blur honestly. So yeah, I'm, I'm not mad about it. I've enjoyed pretty much all the books that I've read. Well, except for a few, but we'll talk about those. Um, so let's just get into the questions. Question one, best book that you've read this year so far? So for this one, I'm going to go with Crescent City by Sarah J Maas. I freaking love this book. It's 800 pages and I mostly read it in like two days because I could not put it down. I mean, I'm just Sarah J Maas trash at this point and she continues to prove why I am trash for her because I love this book. So Bryce Quinlan has had a perfect life. She's a half human, half fae in this modern city that has all these fantastical creatures. She works as an antiques dealer assistant by day and at night is partying it up with her best friend Danica who is an alpha of a werewolf pack. However, her life completely changes when her best friend is murdered. Um, they think that they've caught the suspect but two years later when similar strings of murders start happening again all over the city, Bryce is called in to help deal with the investigation as she is one of the only witnesses in the initial murder. To help with the investigation, Hunt Al Athalar, a fallen angel, is assigned to Bryce. He is an assassin for his boss, an archangel, and even though he's kind of assigned to be a babysitter to Bryce, he will take the deal because that means that if they find the murderer, his freedom will be within reach. As they dig deeper into the city's underbelly, they discover some dark secrets at play that could threaten everything they hold dear. I mean, Sarah just, J Mass just does it, just does stuff so well. And I think the thing that really struck me about this novel that made me a my favorite is how it depicts dealing with grief. I think that both Bryce and Hunt have a lot of grief to deal with. Bryce, because of the fact that her best friend was murdered brutally, awfully, and that was kind of her whole life and how she has to deal with it. And Hunt has a lot of, of grief dealing with the fact that he's a fallen angel and his angel status was revoked. And now he's kind of enslaved to the archangels and is like a murderer for, for hire for them. And it's just like a, a lot of feelings to work through on either side. And I think Sarah J Maas does this so well, which is why Akamath is one of my favorite books. There's just also so much plot at play and she just creates such an intricate world. It's literally insane. Um, I just loved the whole like modern fantasy thing where it's a city with its own technology but it's still fantasy. I think that's not something I've seen a lot. A lot of fantasy worlds are built on like medieval you know type stuff so it's kind of cool to see like cell phones and like all that and like email playing in to the book and not just that but playing a pretty big role in the book yeah I, I don't know i just love everything about it i'm so excited to see what's next in this world and i have so many theories because this world just is so intricate that like i can't wait for the next one whenever it will be and i'm hooked that's just me i'm just sarah j mass trash okay best sequel that you've read this year for this one, I am going to go with Ruthless Gods, which is the sequel to Wicked Saints by Emily A. Duncan. Wicked Saints follows three main protagonists, Nadia, who can hear the voices of the gods in her head, Seraphin, a desperate prince surrounded by suitors and assassins, and Malakiaj, a monster hidden behind pale, tortured eyes. The paths of these three characters come together as they set off on a plot to assassinate the king. And it, there's just so much more that plays into it. Really good enemies to lovers in this book and also 
just like the whole system of religion and the fact of like how Nadia can talk to the gods and like how the gods religious system like plays into the two warring nations and how they have different magicisms and beliefs is really really intricate and cool I really enjoyed that aspect but we're here to talk about the sequel I will say with this book there is a trigger warning for self-harm because blood magic does play a role here so just be aware of that and this book has a big trigger warning for eye horror but you can mostly um skip over that if you know like the certain page where like the certain scene happens but yeah so just be aware of that before heading to these books but as you can see it's a lot bigger than the other one um i tabbed the heck out of this because i just absolutely love my experience reading it it just got so much darker than i thought in the way the characters interactions like they were constantly at each other's throats like like you really wanted the characters to act a certain way and then they would like do the opposite and it was like frustrating but it was just so interesting to see these three characters and their continued dynamic because it's very confusing and like just really like a really good monster book a really good book that like has to do with morally gray characters if you're a fan of morally gray characters is a good series for you so yeah really really love the sequel i think it topped the first book which as you know like middle book syndrome is a thing but i'm just so excited for the last book because the cover and like the side spine oh my god it's gonna look so good on the shelf and i can't okay a new release that you haven't read yet that you want to for me that is going to be a mexican gothic by sylvia moreno garcia so i actually just picked up this book because i was in the process of canceling my book of the month subscription because i'm no longer affiliated with them and i had three credits left so i read the description for this one and i was instantly hooked like i am not someone that normally reaches for the horror genre so for me to like really want to read this is just like weird but i'm gonna go with it i think i've been reading too much fantasy and it's kind of been what's been putting me in a slump so i'm kind of try and like read some different things um going forward but yeah so this is a horror novel and it's set in the mexican countryside noemi is a glamorous but smart debutante and when she gets a frantic letter from her newlywed cousin she sets out to high place a distant house in the mexican countryside She's not afraid of high places, many mysteries. Her cousin's new husband, his father, an ancient patriarch, and the house itself, which starts to invade Noemi's dreams with visions of blood and doom. Her only ally is the family's youngest son, who seems gentle, but he's hiding dark knowledge of the family's past. Will Noemi be able to escape this enigmatic house? Um, yeah, I don't know. Just, like, the cover is gorgeous. Look at it and, like... I don't know, just something about like creepy, distant countryside houses and being stuck in them just seems like a fun time to me. So I really, really want to get to this one as soon as I physically can. Most anticipated book for the second half of the year. I'm going to cheat and do two because these two are by some of my favorite authors and I just like can't wait for them. Oh my god. Okay, so first one is Kingdom of the Wicked by Carrie Maniscalco who has written Stalking Jack the Ripper series which I am a huge fan of. It is a quartet and it's just like amazing historical fiction, fun, murder, you know, it's great. Okay, so I'm a big fan of her. So this is the first thing that she's done outside of that series and it's about two sisters who are stray gay, which is that li live secretly among the humans. When Amelia finds the body of her sister desecrated beyond belief, she sets out to find her sister's killer and get vengeance at any cost. Then Amelia meets Wrath, one of the wicked, aka princes of hell. Wrath claims to be an ally, but tasked by his master with solving the murders. But when it comes to the wicked, nothing is as it seems. I mean, that just sounds so, so good. And this next book is one that I've been anticipating for literally what feels like forever because uh, V.E. Schwab has been talking about this book forever and that is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. It's finally here. I'm so excited. Okay, so this one is set in France, 1714. Addie LaRue makes a desperate bargain with the devil. She will live forever, but is cursed to be forgotten by everyone she ever meets. But everything changes nearly 300 years later when Addie stumbles across a young man in a hidden bookshop and he remembers her name. I don't know about you, but that sounds really good. V. Schwab is a queen and just like, I have adored every single thing of hers that I've read so of course I'm anticipating this one. Oh my god and I will be talking about more anticipated releases for the second half of the year in a video coming probably sometime late August I'd like to do like for in six month batches um anticipated releases videos so hopefully after I move and everything is settled I can film that and I'm 
so I'm excited for that because I just love talking about all the books that I am in. Newest fictional crush. So for this one, I'm going to talk about Chain of Gold by Cassandra Clare. Cassandra Clare just writes like these bunches of teenagers like so well and I think my favorite my new like fictional crush has to be like everyone in this book but mostly like Cordelia and Lucy like fictional crush in terms of just like someone that I read about that I just like really love because I don't say that I like get crushes on fictional characters but yeah um I just really really admire them like Cordelia is so like brash and bold and like determined and Cassandra Clare just does such a beautiful job characterizing her and then I just like love Lucy because she's so like bright and bubbly and like you know shadow hunters are like often portrayed as like very serious but she's like got this bright personality and she's just like so enthusiastic about everything and she loves to write and she's like all about like being a writer and I don't know I just like really admire these two ladies and I love their friendship so that is why I have chosen this book and these characters okay um accidentally skipped around a lot so biggest disappointment of the year that 100 has to be the betrothed by kira kaz i gave this book one star if you know me i often give books five stars so this one star is uh out of character for me but this book just sucked so bad i am sorry but it's like i don't know what i read so the betrothed is about a handsome young king and a would-be queen and then so Hollis is a lady and she is always trying to prove herself to her parents who don't, don't think that she's like really worth anything because she just spends frivolous time at the court but then the king starts to court her and like wants to like promises a betrothal basically it's so, like the step before being engaged um however once she is entangled with the king she meets a stranger who sees right to her heart and it's kind of like her struggle between like the king and her heart except like <laughs> i don't know if i've ever read a book with more insta love it was literally like you know the king was courting her they were getting along well like you know it wasn't love but like if i felt like it was like a good progression of a relationship and then this guy like comes to the castle and they had like two interactions and she's like i love you and i will give up my whole life for you and like this just had such the potential to be so good like a little scandalous like she's gonna leave the king for this guy but like you have to have like some some sort of chemistry you want to like leave the king and like being a queen to like be with this guy and then like just the way it ended was like a mess like it was a mess I don't know what I read, but it was one star and a big disappointment. <laughs> Newest favorite character. That has to be Spensa from Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. Skyward takes place on this planet in space. <laughs> Spensa's people have been desperately trying to escape this abandoned planet that they have found themselves crash landed on 80 years ago. Um, and since she's been a little girl, the people of her planet have been engaging in fights with the aliens that oppress them in the sky and so all she wants is to join the flight academy and be able to prove herself however after her father died after abandoning his crew mid mission um he is labeled as a coward and she's labeled as a coward's daughter and no one thinks that she should go to flight school however she's determined to fly and a accidental discovery in a long forgotten cavern just might be the key to everything that spence's people need I love this book but the reason that i love spenza so much is she is like short and like really really like sassy and fiery and like i just really love that in the character like she just like quotes like these like old like dramatic speeches of like killing your enemies and like i don't just like really it's just great the way that it's written but um my favorite line in particular is something that like i literally keep coming back to it because this was the moment when i like knew that I loved her um, and it's on page 64 so like this is when I knew she was my favorite character it says <clears throat> it was annoying to have to look up at, at him I leaped onto my seat to gain a height advantage for the argument an action that seemed to surprise him he got to said what <laughs> he said, always attack from a position of superior advantage I said when this is done jerk face I will hold your tarnished and melted pin up as my trophy as your smoldering ship marks your pyre in the final resting place, place of your crushed and broken corpse <laughs> <laughs> and it was like about like something like super like not like oh i don't know just like 
that's just an example but like it just makes me smile and laugh because of like the way that she is i just i just love the the fieriness and the fierceness and despite being short and the fact that she just climbed on a chair to like yell at a guy i love it biggest surprise of the year for this i definitely have to go with the shadows between us by trisha levenseller and it's not a surprise in the fact that i was surprised that i loved it but i was surprised about the book itself um because this is a little bit different than the other books that trisha levenseller has written to give you a summary it says alessandra is tired of being overlooked but she's a plan to gain power woo the shadow king marry him kill him and take his kingdom for herself so yes this book was a lot like darker than trisha levenseller's previous books and it's like a very slytherin romance like both of the main leads like are not afraid to like do the dirty work to get what they want and they are very morally gray but i just like loved seeing them come together and like their romance was just like so good and like she can't touch him for most of the books so like that tension was just so good so like it's not a surprise that i loved it but like i guess it's a surprise about like exactly how everything played out and like just how much i loved it and how different it was from her previous works anyways i love trisha love and seller she's an auto buy author for me like i just loved it i just loved it okay so the next question is new favorite author either new to you or a debut author i haven't read too many debut novels this year so i'm going to go with katherine purdy who wrote bone criers moon i read an arc of this and i am meaning to pick up a finished copy like eventually because i did really really love this book Bonecrier's Moon is based on the myth of La Dame Blanche. Elise is the matriarch of the Bonecriers who have a sacred duty to shepherd souls into the afterlife. Um, in order to fully ascend to the title of matriarch, you have to do the ritual, which consists of luring your true love onto the bridge at night and completely enrapturing him and then sacrificing him to the gods. So as Elise is in the process of her ritual bastion is on the hunt for revenge against the bone criers as his father was murdered by a bone crier right in front of him however his vengeance will have to wait as when he finally captures one because elise and bastion's lives are now twined together thanks to the ritual elise's best friend sabine has never had the stomach for the bone criers work however when her best friend is taken captive she will do whatever it takes to save her even if it means defying their traditions i don't know this was just so cool such a really good take on the La Dame Blanche myth. I really enjoyed it. I love the bond of friendship between Elise and Sabine. It was really cool and then the enemies to lovers was really great because like they were try still trying to like find ways to kill each other like at 50% of the way through the book so like I really enjoyed the fact that there was so much tension that way like it was just so slow burn so like they really 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 hate, not only hated each other but wanted to kill each other so it was great i know Catherine purdy has some older series some older ya series that i have not read yet that i would definitely be wanting to check out because of how much i loved this book so i will be keeping my eye out for those a book that made you cry so i don't really cry <laughs> when i read i don't really cry like from like things that I consume. So a notebook has like made me like really cry yet, but I will talk about the Save Me BTS webtoon that I reread at the beginning of this year because that just gets me like every time. It's so sad. BTS has this like alternate world within its music videos that like all of the boys have like traumatic backgrounds and it's a weave throughout all of their music video and content and like you just never have any idea what's going on but i love it and so they came out with this webtoon that's like the prequel to everything and you're starting to get a sense of what exactly is going on in the music videos helps to tie everything together and yeah i love it and the ending just like even if I didn't physically cry, like, it just, like, emotionally devastated me. There are so many trigger warnings for, like, suicide and drug abuse and, I don't know, like, everything. Um, but if you're interested, check it out. I will link the playlist down below that has, like, all of the media in it. If you're interested, if you like alternate universes where you can make up all these theories and stuff, definitely check it out because then there's also a webtoon and a book. So... It's a lot of fun, even though it made me cry. A book that made you happy. I'm going to talk about Yona of the Dawn by Mizuho Kusanagi. And this is a manga that follows Princess Yona after 
Her father is murdered and she has to go on the run with her guard to try and win back the kingdom and it just follows her story and this one has like a lot of volumes and so i've really only just like dipped my toe into the storyline of it i'm not a super big manga reader but like this is one of the first series that i'm like fully like getting into and investing into reading all the the volumes and it just makes me so happy every time i read it because it's a lot of fun i love seeing princess yona's journey and i love that even though it's like a shoujo which is more of the like like romantic side of manga it still has a lot of like shonen elements in it where it's like an adventure story so yeah i just it is just a lot of fun to read it always it makes me smile so yeah i definitely want to continue on with this series soon because it's been too long since i picked up the last volume next one is a favorite video that you've done so far this year and this is a recent video for me my bookshelf tour i have been meaning to make a bookshelf tour like for forever since i moved into this apartment and got these shelves and i just filmed it now that i'm about to move out so like I don't know it's just fun i love watching bookshelf tours i think they're a lot of fun and really cool to watch so please go check it out if you haven't yet i really love the way that it came out um i'm surprised it came out as well as it did for like the risky tripod situation that i had going on because like it was not stable i was standing on chairs standing on my couch doing a lot of things that like were probably not safe but it came out okay in the end and i didn't get injured in the process of making it so that's a win um so yeah if you haven't watched it please go check it out because it is my favorite video that i put out thus far this year most beautiful book that you've bought this year i haven't bought a lot of books because i have been trying to downsize my physical book collection and transition to more of a model of like loaning from the library and that kind of thing and or reading arcs but i am still like buying books like i'm never gonna stop buying books honestly I'm trying to buy books that I just like know I'm gonna love and like I'm gonna want to keep on my shelves for a long time. It's like favorite authors or like just series that I know that I adore. So my favorite book that I bought so far this year is this Crescent City Tour Edition. This is what the back looks like. It's pretty simple but it it's just like, I don't know, I just like love the simplicity of the design. It's just very cool and I love that it's like something that's exclusive. The only reason the tour edition was up for purchase is because of covid the tour was canceled so waterstones put the um extras up on their site and i'm so happy that i was able to grab this because i literally i love it so much even though i love the original crescent city cover as well i just think that like i don't know there's just something about this one that i adore the books that i need to read by the end of the year and for this one there's so many and like i said i'm gonna have an anticipated fantasy video coming out but for this one i'm just gonna go over three so the first one is majesty which is the sequel to american royals i currently have the arc from netgalley um and i listened to the first one on audio so i'm gonna try and read it soon but american royals follows the story of line of like what if washington was president and we now had the washington royal line and it's kind of like the gossip of the american royal line um and it's really fun we follow like the three children and the first book ended on a bit of a cliffhanger so i'm so excited for this second novel because i think it's gonna be really juicy and a lot of fun um the second one is vicious spirits which is the sequel to wicked fox by cat cho this takes place in modern day seoul and we follow mi young who is a gumiho otherwise known as a korean nine-tailed fox it's an urban fantasy and it's just a good mix of like traditional korean folklore and modern and, and fun um so i adored the first book and i can't wait to read the second one um i, I think it's like it's just a companion novel so i'm interested to see like more of what it follows but i think it follows a character who's a goblin if i'm not mistaken so yeah i just really want to read it and i loved how the first book really focused on family dynamics and also i got to learn like a lot of korean terminology and a lot of things about the culture at that i just think it's a lot of fun to pick up on these things through reading like fantasy and fiction rather than just like kind of like reading it dry you know like it just makes it more fun to incorporate it so i don't know that's why it's fun to read diversely and the last book that i want to read is as the shadow rises by katie rose pool which is a sequel to there will come a darkness so in there will come a darkness there's basically this prophecy of like someone that will come and save everyone from the end of the world and there's this last prophet after all the prophets disappeared it's a greco-roman inspired fantasy and there's five main characters that like play a role in this prophecy and could potentially be like the prophet um just the way like that all comes together it's such like a good cast of characters and i truly just like really really 
adored that book and the first book is just like mind-blowing and so good and the second book is coming out and like just i'm just really excited for it because i really think it's going to be like spectacular i can't wait i can't wait and that is it for my mid-year book freakout tag as always i have so much fun doing these videos every year if you haven't done the mid-year book freakout tag and you want to do it i tag you so um with that being said please let me know what you thought of this video like comment and subscribe and have some fun read some books and i'll catch you guys in the next one